Hi there, this is Tony from the Refinement Not Retirement podcast here again to give you a further quick update from a UK perspective on the Trump criminal trial in New York. It's just so fascinating watching this big legal drama unfold over the pond. And as I watch it, or I can't watch it because it's not a live video or anything like that, we have to rely on reports coming out of the court. Uh, as I watch it, I can't help wondering what differences would there would be if this was happening in the UK, something similar, not that anything probably ever could, but anything similar like this was happening in the UK. How would a UK judge deal with somebody like Trump if they were faced with it? I really, really just wonder. So any of you UK barristers or solicitors out there, or judges for that matter, especially judges who just like to weigh in on this, do comment, um, get in touch. We'd love to hear what you have to say. You can do that via our refinement, uh, not retirement podcast Facebook page, our Facebook page, where you can send a direct message if you don't want it to be public, uh, so we could start a dialogue and perhaps get you involved in this conversation, because I'd love to hear what UK uh, lawyers have to say about what's going on over there. So yesterday was day three. Yesterday was Tuesday. Uh, what date was that? Let's see. We're the, I'm recording this at noon on Wednesday, the 24th of April, 2024. Yesterday was Tuesday. And that was, uh, I think, day three. No, day two. Was that day two? Day two. Yeah, the day two of the trial proper. Uh, tomorrow will be, uh, well, today is Wednesday getting muddled here today is wednesday and there's no court for, for a reason let, not really quite sure what the reason for that is but the trial doesn't um there's no hearings uh on a on every wednesday and i think that's so that the judge has time to deal with other matters other cases uh but as we go through what happened yesterday on tuesday uh, let's keep and in, indeed as we take these uh, commentaries forward let's keep in mind uh, comparing uh, their system and what would happen what's happening there with what might happen in the UK legal system let's keep that in mind so yesterday the I think the first thing on the agenda uh, was a contempt hearing uh, Trump was accused uh, by the prosecution of multiple breaches of the judge's gag order and there was a that was the first order of day a hearing about that um i think that the the technical term that they use over there is that the prosecution required the defense to uh show cause as to why he hadn't breached you know g given the assertions the allegations that were being made by the prosecution he had to show cause uh, why the uh, the judge's order had judge's gag order had not been breached, and his his lawyer Todd Blanche really was given a very hard time by the judge. Uh, and I think it sounds to me as, as a layperson that it was with some justification, because he didn't really come prepared at all, from what I can gather from the reports that came out of the court i mean surely you would come with some evidence uh to counter what was being asserted by the prosecution he sort of made some kind of lame re remark that uh, that trump was responding to political attacks although political attacks you know political attacks from from for example witnesses as though responses to political tax, uh, attacks were somehow allowed by the uh, gag order. And I couldn't understand why he would take that position, because there's nothing in the order that suggests that as long as it's a political attack, you can still attack witnesses and court staff and what have you. But it didn't even seem that Todd Blanche could respond to the... Uh, judge asking him, well, what are the, what examples, even if political attacks are allowed, what examples have you got? 
And he didn't seem to have any examples that, uh, that, that, that were at all persuasive. And he didn't, as I say, he didn't come with any actual evidence. Um, you know, he'd repeatedly said that Cohen, he stated that Cohen had perjured himself on several occasions. Um, and of course, that is a direct violation. That's a, a direct comment about a negative comment about a, somebody who's going to appear as a witness, a key, a key witness. So he can't talk about witnesses, court staff or their family. That's those are the essential um, components. Those are the essential components of of, um, of the gag order. Uh, so you know that was really not good at all. And let's see. Uh, so the, the prosecution were asserting that that there were at least ten bre breaches, um, including what I've just said about Cohen, a witness, being a serial perjurer. And there was also what was the other thing? Yes, the, the, Trump. Uh, sorry, Trump's lawyer, uh, Blanche, uh, Todd Blanche. W uh, part of his answer was that whilst, well, he said that Trump was fully familiar with the terms of the order, but he said that because Trump, in one case, had uh, at least one case, had reposted something. Uh, reposted something, something that had been said by another, uh, that that was not a breach of the order, although he didn't have any case law. Uh, he was asked by the judge, but he didn't have any case law to to embolden that, uh, to back that up. So uh, the, the, the judge really got quite angry um, with... Todd Blanche, as far as I can gather from the reporting, I mean, he actually said to him at one stage, you are losing all credibility with the court, which means credibility with the judge, which, I mean, no lawyer wants to hear that. But with regard to this retweet or repost, I think it was something that was said by a Fox News uh, contributor saying that, um, you know, that liberals were trying to get on the trial, you know, trying to get on the jury <clears throat> but trump had what i think the judge pointed out was that that trump had actually typed out the words and put them in quotation marks as though that that they, they it was verbatim what had been said by the fox news contributor but in fact uh he wasn't that so that's not a repost he actually typed it out and put it in quotes, but he added and put in quotes words that were not actually used by the Fox News contributor. That's how I understand it. I may not have that, that entirely right, but that's how I understand it. And that's really um, the judge. You know, he wasn't helping the judge. The judge, I think, was bending over backwards. Look, what have you got? What arguments have you got to to counter these allegations? And he he came to court it seems to me from the reporting um empty-handed uh, and you know i don't, the the judge has just did not rule on this contempt matter uh, at the time he's reserved his judgment as we would say and uh he will be ruling later at some point later and that may be because he now has to go off and and research himself whether there's any anything in uh, anything that can be said on Trump's side. doesn't look like there's much, if anything, that can be said, but we'll see. So it seems likely to me that the judge is going to find him, uh, at least to a certain extent, if not totally, uh, in contempt. Uh, and so the, the, if that's the case, the next thing will be, well, how's he going to, how's he going to punish him? Uh, because clearly putting him in jail well the, the prosecution isn't even asking for that at this stage i think very wisely I and mean, they're at the moment they're just asking for fines and the maximum fine on each one of the breaches is one thousand dollars which to trump so it's 10 it's 10 so if they got all of if they got their way on all if if they all 10 were found to be breaches that would be ten thousand dollars well that's chump change isn't it <laughs> to trump it, you know i mean he can do he can pay that sort of thing all every day uh, without batting an eyelid. So it's not going to really deter him, is it? Uh, 
it seems to me. So the next thing would be a spell, maybe an hour, two hours in jail. It can jail him for up to 30 days, as I understand the rules over there. So let's think about that. What, what, you know, I'd like to, I don't know the answer to it. I know nothing about criminal law in the UK um, and uh, no experience of it, thank goodness. And uh, so I don't know what would happen in these circumstances. So anybody out there who can give us some pointers on, on what would happen, what, what a UK judge would be likely to do here, uh, then that would be, that would be really um, educational to hear. So do, do weigh in on that, please. So that, anyway, that's how they left the whole contempt hearing matter. Um, uh, so the next, so then the trial continued, and that was the continuation of David Pecker. You may remember David Pecker as the National Enquirer guy, and he sort of went into the details of this catch and kill. He called it uh, check. He called it checkbook journalism. He said they did checkbook journalism. And one of the American lawyers I was listening to uh, said it was the first time he'd ever heard that expression and i think that that's because certainly not the first time i've heard it and i think that that's because that's a uk term isn't it i think that tabloids in the uk have been accused of checkbook journalism but it, apparently it's that's a new term or it was to this american lawyer that i was very experienced american lawyer that i was listening to on the subject so um he, what they did is they you know they they came what peck what as i understand pecker's testimony uh, he was the head of the National Enquirer at the time. Um, that shortly after Trump announced uh, that he was going to run for for the presidency uh, in the 2016 election, he had a meeting with uh, with Trump. Trump was present, as I understand it, and so was Michael Cohen, Trump's uh, personal attorney and someone who's referred to as his fixer because he fixed problems for Trump. Uh, and at this meeting, this is when, according to the prosecution, uh, this is when the deal was done. A deal was discussed and agreed whereby the uh, National Enquirer would do two, thing, do two things, find, be, be the eyes and ears of the Trump campaign and find things that uh, that negative stories that that uh, would hurt the Trump campaign for president. So they, they would do that, and then they would kill them by kill them off, smother them by making payments um, on behalf of Trump, as I understand it. And they and beyond that, they would also post negative stories to help the campaign. Uh, about Trump's political opponents. So all of this was obviously to benefit the Trump campaign. And uh, this is, because it's to, to help a um, campaign, I understand it, that that would be re regarded technically as in-kind donations to the campaign, which makes it a felony. And the prosecution says that these guys were all Cohen, Trump, and uh, Pecker, were co-conspirators in this illegal scheme, as the as the prosecution would have it. So this was the interesting thing about this is that this is clearly a scheme to create fake news. Well, that's how it comes over to me, which is which is which is kind of interesting, isn't it? When Trump, I mean, when I think back to the early days of Trump's presidency, I mean, all he ever used to talk about was well, accuse the mainstream media of fake news. And it seems to me that it's part of Trump's makeup that he likes to accuse other people of the very things, uh, bad things that he himself does. So he projects his own bad behavior onto his opponents, I think. Uh, the Americans refer to that as projection. Um, and uh, clearly, he's he was in the clearly he was in the, this this whole scheme was was largely about manufacturing fake news and uh, covering up the payments uh, by uh, falsifying b 
business records. That's what the prosecution says. Um, so this whole thing, this this story that that David Pecker is laying out, seems to be amounting to very powerful evidence against Trump, and it's there's more direct evidence uh, to come as uh, David Pecker continues what we would call his evidence in chief. Uh, and uh, after that, of course, the fascinating bit will be the cross-examinations and seeing how the defense lawyers for Trump seek to undermine that evidence. Pecker said that, which I think was very, very damaging also, um, said that Trump is, is, is an extremely detail-oriented person. He, he's a micromanager. So the assertions that the defense are making that he didn't know about stuff and you know he just wrote a few checks and didn't really I, I mean, not i don't want to put words in their mouth but as i understand the defense's position he just wrote out checks didn't really know any about any of no and certainly didn't know the detail of these things and that just seems to be wholly contrary to wholly contrary to uh, trump's make up as we all have all come to know it uh interesting one of the, the public statements that trump made was that um uh, that he didn't even take a tax you know these were business expenses legal expenses and he didn't even take a tax write-off for them didn't deduct them for tax purposes well that's it seems to me that 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 does the opposite of what he wants it to do it's not a it's it doesn't show that uh it doesn't show that that that, uh, uh, that these were legitimate legal expenses, these payments, it, 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 because if they were, I mean, Trump did, makes deductions. He's very clever on make, saving himself tax, and and why why would he treat these why would he treat these payments differently from other business expenses? So I think he's really shot himself in the foot there, um, but. Maybe I've got that wrong and would love to hear other perspectives on that. Um, so th there's more of this story to come. I mean, there came, there came a point where uh, in the story, as I understand it, that David Pecker withdrew. There must have been some kind of falling out with Trump because he wouldn't pay, make the payment to Stormy Daniels after he'd made previous payments. And there must have been a reason for that and interested to hear what what that was. Um, it looks like that that the the prosecution with their story tell, with telling their story are going to go in sort of chronological order and the, and the next witness is perhaps going to be the the play the play playboy playmate girl uh, woman I should say Kathy McDougal I think her name is who comes across in the interviews that I've seen as a you know, really really lovely person a sincere person so. I think her, her evidence is probably likely to be um, damaging also. So after the hearing uh, yesterday, Trump uh, came out as he likes to do and spouted off, complaining that <laughs> complaining that there were none of his protesters there for him at court and that they should be allowed to come and protest. Well, he 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 seemed to say something that was, you know, wholly inaccurate. He said that they were prevented by barricades that had been put up around the court and they weren't allowed to, they sort of suggested they weren't allowed to come. But it looks to me uh, as though there weren't any, you know, there maybe have been one or two uh, protesters there, but it looks to me as though protesters have not been coming out to, to support him outside the court in any numbers. And that really that was a porky pie. Uh, that they were prevented from getting there because there have been media video of me, media have uh, put up video of, of showing that, that you know that there's just nobody there or very few people there. The other thing that's very interesting is that it seems, correct me if I'm wrong about this, but it seems that there's nobody there in terms of family or or friends to support Trump, certainly family. I mean, where are his sons? Where's his wife? They're not there. I mean, people, you know, normally in this sort of situation, your 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 wife would be there, wouldn't wouldn't she, to to support you? She's, I don't think she's turned up once. I don't think his sons or daughter um, have shown up once, which 
well take from that what you may but it do, it's not a good sign is it he seems like quite a lonely figure and i think from you know his his lawyers must be really exasperated with the guy don't you think i mean i mean he's making their job so so well i think he's making it impossible really would love to hear from uh, you uk lawyers uh, about you know how you would deal with a problem like maria a problem like trump uh, how would you deal with that how would you deal with that i oh, heaven heaven knows Trump also complained in his, um, you know, in his usual uh, post-hearing speech that uh, to the media that uh, he was not allowed to talk about the case. But that just isn't true either, is it? I mean, he is allowed as long as he doesn't breach the 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 gag order, which is limited in its scope. I mean, it's you know, he's not supposed to talk about witnesses, and he's not he's not supposed to talk. Uh, you know, attack, not allowed to attack witnesses, not allowed to attack uh, court staff and uh, court staff's family. I mean, he can even attack the judge, as I understand it, and he can attack the prosecutor, as I understand it, which I'm not sure whether that would be allowed. Again, you know, let, let me know whether that sort of thing would be allowed in the UK. Because Trump is vehemently saying that he's is you know that he he's not having the right to free speech, but free speech isn't you know particularly in legal proceedings, criminal legal proceedings, it's not an unfettered right. Uh, you know you're released on conditions, aren't you? You know you're released, you're on bail on conditions, as I understand it. So there we are. That's that's uh, where we've got to so far. Nothing, no court today, as I've said. So it's going to be really, really fascinating to see what how this whole thing. Uh, unfolds further and uh, thank you for your interest in this unique UK perspective on what's going on over there I think it's very important to us uh, you know this you know, the president of the United States is the most powerful person in the world this guy is running again uh, to become the US president and I think that's very consequential as I've said before, for us in the UK, ultimately, and for the whole of the world. Don't you? I think it is. Anyway, see you next time. Thanks. For oh, and uh, please uh, do interact with us via, again, via our Refinement Not Retirement Facebook page, where you can comment publicly, but a lot of people prefer to send us a direct message, and we can we can pick it up from there and deal with any questions you have. Um, about what we've had to say any comments particularly about what you what we've had to say and yes please let's hear from some uk legal experts who can uh, can help us out with how these things would differ uh, were something like this to be happening in the uk thanks everyone see you next time bye for now